Well, it's been a pretty amazing year for the sun. You think about it, we had a total solar eclipse in the spring. There was so much activity with the solar storm that we saw northern lights all the way down to Florida. It was really cool. Some interesting things going on, and we have a NASA expert. Nikki Rail joins us to talk about something you guys are really excited about. NASA's got a super close approach to the sun. Talk to us, Nikki. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. We are thrilled that our Parker Solar Probe spacecraft is going to be making its closest approach yet to the sun on December 24th. We launched the mission in 2018. It's the culmination of decades of work, getting us up close and personal inside the atmosphere of our star and the closest pass yet. That is incredible. Now, how close is it going to get to the sun? You know, you, you think about this, and when you talk about the actual distances, it sounds like it's far away, but this is really pretty incredibly close. It is. So if you can imagine like a football field, one end, one um, you know end zone is the earth and one end zone is the sun. We're on like the four yard line of the sun right now. It's incredible. We're really close within 3.8 million miles. So we're literally touching the star. We're touching our star and inside that atmosphere of the sun to really understand the start of solar wind and how that energy flows out from our star all the way to earth, showing things like Aurora, which you're talking about. Yeah, so cool. Now, with the total solar eclipse, when there's totality, you could see kind of the, the almost it looks like a feathery or almost ghostly kind of ring around the moon. And that's kind of the outer reaches of the sun's atmosphere. Is this going to get close enough to actually kind of interact with some of that? How does this work? Yeah, you're right. So that corona, that outermost atmosphere of the sun, is that wispy kind of feathery layer. I was so excited to see it with my uh, naked eyes during the total solar eclipse. And, and yes, indeed, Parker Solar Probe is in that corona, taking measurements and understanding what is going on at the start of all the energy that's flowing out and the, the kind of irregularity, irregularity of that corona. It's incredible. You know, it's been so active this year. We've had these solar storms, and it seems like for the past few years, the sun's in a pretty active cycle. What does NASA, what do scientists hope to gain from this? What are we really going to try to learn? Yeah, you're right. So we're actually in the middle of something called solar maximum, or a really busy active time in the sun. The sun has an 11-year cycle, and we just happen to be in that big, busy peak period where we're seeing more energy flowing out, more coronal mass ejections, more solar flares. And so this is an unprecedented time for Parker to be in there and taking measurements and gaining us important scientific data to better understand what's happening during these busy periods of the sun. You know, a lot of folks ask me when we talk about solar storms that are coming, we can see and we know a little bit of lead time on some of this stuff. But, you know, a lot of times on Earth, we don't really feel that much of an effect. We might see the aurora. There might be some communication things. But for space exploration, you think about a mission to maybe Mars or the moon, the information that you guys pick up could be really key in helping prepare for those, right? You're absolutely right. So we're really protected on Earth by the magnetosphere and the upper layers of our atmosphere from the sun's energy. But as we leave our protective home, as we go outside back to the moon, Mars, and beyond, we don't have the luxury of that protection of Earth. So we really need to better understand what's happening with the sun and the flow of energy to protect our astronauts, to protect our satellites, and protect our communications in deeper space. I want to dive in just a little bit more on the spacecraft itself. I mean, here we have this incredibly close pass, call it touching the sun almost. How does NASA, how do you guys build this spacecraft to withstand that type of, you know, intense activity and the heat and everything else with this? How does that work? So Parker is an engineering marvel. So the heat shield on Parker Solar Probe is about four and a half feet wide and about uh, eight feet, it's about eight feet wide and about four and a half inches thick, which is incredible. And so it's built to withstand about 2,500 degrees at the front of the part of the heat shield facing the sun. And not too far behind that, where all our critical scientific instruments are, it's at room temperature. So not only are we protecting from this incredible energy that's flowing out, we're also really protecting all the instruments on board while also going around Venus to get gravity assist to slow down to get closer to the sun. Yeah, I wanted to ask about this with Venus. So you are getting a little help from Venus with gravity assist. This is all part of it. It always amazes me. And again, you're an expert on this. You understand how all this works. But for all of us laymen out here, how do you guys figure this out? I mean, I know it's physics, but still, I mean, how much time does it take to prepare a mission like this? 
it takes a really long time. I work for NASA and I think orbital mechanics is magic. It's incredibly difficult to understand and it is incredible physics, but by studying, you know, missions like this and by using other planetary bodies, they can help us almost with like a reverse slingshot to slow us down to get us closer to the sun. While Parker is traveling at about 430,000 miles per hour, it's the fastest man-made um, object. You know, it's an incredible speed. We actually have to slow down a little bit to kind of fall back towards the sun because we're going so fast. Now, I almost hate to ask this because I feel like I'm getting so close to Parker now as, a, as an instrument here, but what is the ultimate fate of this thing? Does it eventually get pulled into the sun and burn up, or does it somehow slingshot out? What is, do you know what the longer-term happening is for Parker? Well, we hope we'll have Parker operating for a very long time. It was designed to operate through 2025. It will never burn up in the sun, but um, we'll hope it keeps going for many, many more years to come, collecting data. And that heat shield is made to protect it, so we'll continue in its orbit for quite a time to come. Nikki, that is so awesome. And honestly, I had no idea. I was just shooting from the hip with that question. So good stuff there. What is it about the sun that gets you most fired up? And not to be punny there, but truly, I mean, this is your interest in, I know you had done some biological work reading your bio, uh, but what is it about this project that gets you the most excited? Well, I just think having a star, our neighborhood star, and being able to understand it and the energy that's coming from it to our home on Earth and how it impacts our planet and how it also is going to interfere with us as a interact with us as a species for exploration. I mean, think about human exploration and, and the adventure that's to come. Yeah. We need to understand our star. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And when is it going to make its closest pass or when should we start looking to get more feedback from this mission? Yeah. The closest pass is on December 24th, and within a few days, we hope to get that green beacon tone telling us everything went well, and in the days and months to come, we'll be looking forward to the data that's coming down from Parker. Oh, that would be quite a Christmas present for NASA to get that good data coming in. Nikki, thank you so much for your time. This is really fascinating. We'll look forward to hearing more from you and your colleagues in the coming weeks and hopefully months as we get more and more information from Parker. Thank you for your time.